Every day, I feel like society has hit bottom. And unfortunately, every day, I am proven wrong. Most recently, I saw a video clip of comments or remarks made by Governor Kathy Hochul. Uh, Kathy Hochul is the governor of New York, and she was at a forum of sorts in California. And she had the bravado to say that there are certain black kids in the Bronx, New York, who don't know what the word computer means. Right now we have, you know, young black kids growing up in the Bronx who don't even know what the word a computer is. They, they don't know. They don't know these things. And I had to sit there for a minute and really calm myself down for a second because I've heard similar rhetoric from that particular side of the aisle for quite some time. And I can't for the life of me understand why those individuals seem to get a free pass. You might be saying, oh, they don't get a free pass. But they do. And I'll explain. Mayor Eric Adams came to her defense, Kathy Hochul's defense, in light of those deplorable, uh, abhorrent and infuriating comments by saying that he didn't want to be the word police. The Bronx knows her, her heart and she's a good person, basically blah, blah, blah. And we see this happen time and time again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 the um, uh, l Listen. I am not the word police. I know the governor's heart. And, you know, when you make uh, thousands of speeches, when you're in front of the cameras all the time, when you're trying to be authentic and say the things uh, that you're really feeling, uh, one can sit back and do a critical analysis of every sentence you say and say, you know, oh, you didn't say it this way, that way. I know her heart. I know what she was intended to say. And she was not trying to be disrespectful. Uh, to the people of the Bronx, and I thank her for what she's doing and how she's highlighting, uh, you know, the issues. And what's unfortunate is you still see African-American individuals, African-American women particularly, and then men not far behind them, break for the Democrat Party at an almost 90 percent clip. And the question is, why? Why do we have such an internalized level of Stockholm syndrome that the vast majority of us continue to literally vote against our own self-interest? I can't think of anything more insulting out there than to say that in this day and age, in 2024, there's children in the Bronx in New York who don't know what a computer is when New York was one of the same states where originally when the scamdemic was unleashed on the world, they were the first ones allocating hundreds of thousands of tablets so that all the school kids could go and do remote learning because, oh, it's, it's, not, it's not safe for you to be around your fellow schoolmates. You need to sit at home and suffer the consequences of not being able to socialize like normal children are. So here, here's a tablet, John, little Johnny, little Billy. Sit home and try to learn. And we're seeing developmental issues come out, a plethora of them, as a result of these ridiculous and fail the policies that were proven to not be rooted in science whatsoever. But I digress. The fact that Kathy Hochul had the nerve to say that in the first place indicates one prevailing truth that seems to have stood the test of time as far as the left is concerned. And that is that they view minorities particularly with a certain degree of derision. And they believe that we must always need them to help us because we're incapable of helping ourselves, which in itself is an affront. But beyond that, even she chose to come out after she got backlash from her comment that she made offhandedly and say, oh, uh, I didn't mean it like that. I want to blah, 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 uh, promote new jobs for New Yorkers and access to education and all this garbage, this uh, political lead speak without failing to address the fact that she's not upset about her comments because that's what she really thinks. She seems to be upset mainly that she's getting actual backlash from it. Now, the backlash that she got from it was well deserved, I would argue. And it actually is pointing me to a little bit of a positive streak, if you will, positive indicators that the average individuals out there, particularly even minorities, they seem to be realizing they have been sold a bill of false goods from the left side of the aisle for as long as we generationally can remember. You know, there's people out there who will say, oh, the party switched. Trust me, I can talk about that all day, too. There's no evidence for that. The only person who switched from uh, right to left after the Civil Rights Act was an individual by the name of Strom Thurmond. Look him up. This is basic facts. You can you can know and repeat if you have access to a computer and you're a black person. You know how to think for yourself. It's a beautiful thing when you start to throw it back in their face and help them realize that their condescension, their derision simply cannot be allowed to continue unchecked. 
Hearing about her comments and hearing how Mira Eric Adams, her little lap dog, rushed to her defense, it made me start thinking about the concept of us versus them. Because for especially the past several years here in America, everything has been presented as if it is some sort of binary. Oh, it's the left versus the right. It's Ukraine versus Russia. It's America versus Mexico. It's one versus the other. And that's a very brilliant or ingenious ploy that's been deployed by individuals who are the elites who wish to keep us at each other's throats so that we cannot see the elites for who they truly are and then call for restorative or retributive action as a result of their continued failure to uphold the values and ideologies of their constituents that they swore an oath to represent and to protect and serve. Now, more evidence of this growing lack of approval for the powers that be has come out most recently in the most unlikely of places, that place being TikTok, wherein individuals have noted the continued extravagant lifestyles of the elites or the entertainers or the influencers of the world, these people who pretend to be something else for a living. I can't imagine a more soul-crushing existence than that, but I digress again. And many individuals now are actually saying we should block these influencers, these celebrities who will show up to the Met Gala where tickets cost like $75,000 a piece, where the the news media is more concerned about, oh, which man is going to be wearing a dress on the red carpet for this event? All of this is completely extraneous information. And the average individual can no longer relate to those celebrities because of the disastrous policies of the Biden administration. And now we're seeing almost the chickens come home to roost, if you will. We're seeing people realize for sometimes the first time in their lives, these people don't work for me. These people don't care for me. These people only care about me to the degree to which they can exploit me for their own political ends. And then every two, four or six years, they're going to come back and say, oh, I care about you. Let me walk around the city and pretend I'm one of you. And they're not the ones who are having to worry. What am I going to do? Fill up my car with gas or get groceries for my family? They're not the ones having to make those decisions because they're somehow in the halls of Congress making one hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year on salary. And they're magically becoming millionaires overnight. Oh, their stock picks are always amazing. That's just a coincidence, of course. But they're the first ones to say, deploy more IRS agents because we want to come down on the middle class just to make sure they paid every cent to us so we can send it all to Ukraine or Israel. This is the status quo. It doesn't have to be that way, though. I would argue here in America in 2024, it's not even so much us versus them anymore, even though it should be. It's become individuals who are awake or enlightened and individuals who are willfully ignorant. And it's not until we can all come together as human beings and realize wrong for what it is and call it out for what it is, that we can finally have the ultimate showdown, which would be good versus evil, the common individuals versus the corrupt elite and the establishment. That is what we should be striving towards. Yes, we have elections every four years. Yes, we have elections every two years in some cases. But the vast majority of people, their day to day life is not as impacted by those two and four year elections, hardly as much as they're impacted by the local elections. And we can't seem to get out of our own way sometimes because we're so concerned with what is the the left versus right playbook for today instead of realizing, recognizing this is just good versus evil in every aspect, be that in Hollywood, be that in politics, be that entertainment, the list goes on and on. We have to have that same level of energy for those things that matter and help wake up other individuals to realize it's not blue versus red, it's good versus evil. And until we get in that fight and become serious about that fight, then the elites and the powers that be are going to continue to maintain the status quo of having an us versus them type deal based on silly things like immutable characteristics and things that don't really matter. I want you to think about that because that's the message for this video. Let's pray. God in Galatians chapter five, verse one, you tell us uh, to not uh, submit to not uh, submit to the, the ways of the world that we are free and that we should not return to that yoke of bondage. And I ask you to remind individuals out there who are believers, who do believe in your world, in your word, that it's not about going back and forth from one terrible plight to the other, but that once we have become made free by you, then it is our duty, it is our right to throw off those shackles forever and not return to that slavery, regardless of where that slavery may come from. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 
That's the message for this video. If you like that video, I ask you to press that like button, press that share button, press that follow button. These are all things you can do that don't cost you a dime, but that help me actually reach other individuals with the truth through videos like this and other videos I will release in the future. You know how it is. It's Damani Felder. You can find me on Facebook, find me on Instagram, find me on X, find me on TikTok, find me on True Social, find me on Rumble, find me on YouTube, find me on Parlor. The list goes on and on. I will continue to use those talents God's given me to the best of my abilities. I thank you so much for coming along for the journey. I say this all the time. You don't have to go to seminary to understand the Bible. You don't have to go to a culinary school to know how to cook. You don't have to be a political science whiz to understand the way politics works. But thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And just wait, because I have a surprise for you this evening. My beautiful princess, Lila Marie, decided to join me this evening after her wonderful nap that she just had. Because guess what? This little one here is over five months old now. I can't believe it. I feel like she was just born yesterday. What are you looking at? All the people are that way. But I just wanted to uh, show her to you all because I consider y'all to be part of my family and I want to share my family with you as well. And she loves staring at herself, actually. So I'm trying to see if she can find herself there. But uh, from Lila, from me and from my beautiful Queen Annie, I just want to say thank you so much for making me a part of your evening. Thank you so much for keeping us lifted up in prayer. Uh, and thank you for continuing to be members of this fight along with me because it does take all of us together. So thank you all so much for watching. I love you all. I appreciate you all. And we'll catch you in the next one. Y'all take care.